Welcome once again to our Amazing Grace Lenten devotional series. In this fifth and final session of our series, we marvel at the story of amazing grace in the life of St. Paul, who turned from persecutor of Christ to proclaimer of our Lord through the mighty power of the Holy Spirit. In the same way, the cross of Christ changes us all from enemy to friend. So let us begin. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, even though Paul persecuted your church, arrested the faithful, and approved of their deaths, you called him to be an ambassador for your kingdom, sending him into the world to spread the good news of salvation in Jesus. You have looked on us in grace and you have forgiven our sins. Help us to live in repentant humility and ever seek your mercy. By the power of your Spirit, lead us to grow in faith and in the knowledge of your word so that we too can serve as faithful witnesses to our Savior's love. Hear our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Our first reading comes from Isaiah chapter 53, verses 1 through 6. Who has believed what he has heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men, hide, men hid their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 through 17. I thank him who has given me strength, Christ Jesus our Lord because he judged me faithful, appointing me to his service, though formerly I was a blasphemer, persecutor, and insolent opponent. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost." But I received mercy for this reason, that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. To the King of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> And now a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 2, verses 13 through 17. He went out again beside the sea, and all the crowd was coming to him, and he was teaching them. And as he passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, Follow me. And he rose and followed him. And as he reclined at table in his house, many tax collectors and sinners were reclining with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. And the scribes of the Pharisees, when they saw that he was eating with sinners and tax collectors, said to his disciples, Why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? And when Jesus heard it, he said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I came not to call the righteous but sinners. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father 
and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. We are rescued from our wretchedness through the overwhelming victory of God's amazing grace through Christ. Wretched man that I am, Paul says, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. St. Paul was well aware of his own wretched state in his life and his struggle with his own weaknesses. But through it all, he trusted the power of the gospel as God's grace to give him peace. Paul's journey to that grace of Christ started when he was a Pharisee who persecuted the Church of Christ. In his religious zeal for the law and its tradition, he thought that the church was upending all that was sacred, and so he was most proud of his role and his commitment to the law. So he engaged in practices to scourge, ban, and excommunicate the Christians from the places of worship throughout the many regions outside of Jerusalem. But as he did so, he began to notice that the Christians themselves displayed a peace in their spirits that remained unbroken. Despite his best efforts to torment them, they had something that Paul lacked, peace. Paul was deeply moved by this experience. Even the cry of Christ to him was one of such gentle patience, calling him with grace and love, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? All that he had done in his zealous persecutions only made it clear that it was not the Christians who had a problem, but he did a wretched state of conflict within himself that he inflicted upon others. He was overcome by the grace of God in Christ and converted from being a persecutor of the gospel to being one of its most adamant and yet humble proclaimers. In spite of Paul's many acts of animosity and violence, God had other things in mind for him. Christ's grace to call Paul as an apostle of the faith demonstrates how far and deep Christ was willing to go for the most wretched. Paul gave up his former life and embraced the ministry to which he was called, gladly giving up what he had and sharing instead the message of God's amazing grace in Christ. The suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus the Christ became Paul's new proclamation. Instead of contributing to the sufferings of others, as he once did, Paul was willing to take on Christ's sufferings for him as the power for his own suffering for the lives of others who were themselves lost and in a wretched state, even sharing with them the love, mercy, and peace that he himself came to grasp in Christ. Paul was not alone in his former life of wretchedness nor even in doing acts that made the lives of others wretched. Like Paul, we must also admit and confess our own accountability for our great many sins. We have often denied the sufferings of others and have in fact said and done things that have only contributed to their sufferings. And we have tried to let ourselves off the hook for the wrongs we have done. But no one is without culpability from this judgment of our sin. Yet God did not intend to abandon us in this state of judgment. The confession of sin is but the precursor to the blessings we receive in Jesus the Christ. Christ trumps all of our sin and gives us his peace and forgiveness. The damning judgment of our sin is not the last word for us. The last word is that God loves us and sees us beyond all condemnation, making us righteous through our faith in Christ. Paul connects that amazing grace of Christ with our own faith. Our faith is our acceptance of God's grace, this precious, undeserved gift that God so dearly and urgently wants us to have and to hold. Indeed, Paul boasted of how our faith is our righteousness because it opens its hands to trust and grasp that God will fill us with grace and peace. But faith finds its secret not in it, but faith finds its secret power not in itself, 
but in the grace that God bestows upon us through our trust. Abraham looked at the stars of the sky and sands on the seashore, seashore while hearing God's promise, so shall your descendants be. And by his faith, he was reckoned as righteous. Jesus said to those who were recipients of his amazing grace, your faith has saved you. The power of faith is not in the paucity of our faith itself. It is the object that faith trusts, the righteousness that we have through Christ's grace that makes faith great. But faith empowers us to be with the suffering of this world. Indeed, we join in their suffering, trusting that whatever happens to us will not destroy us, but only serve to bring the peace of Christ to others. And that promise of the gospel which we trust is what empowers us to risk this life of care and mercy. Paul faced many sufferings and hardships in his ministry. He would himself be persecuted, beaten, and imprisoned. And he struggled with his sense of weakness in the flesh to do what is right and good. In our weakness, we cannot boast of much of anything about ourselves to make ourselves worthy of God's love and mercy. But we do trust in Christ, and in so doing, we cling to his promise and victory for us that gives us peace. The centerpiece of that victory of God's grace, however, is the cross of Christ. On the cross, Christ suffered and died for us, bearing the curse of the judgment of our unworthiness of God's favor. Jesus the Christ made our curse his, and he bore the cross for our sakes freely and willingly. But through Christ's death on the cross, the curse of our sinful restlessness under judgment and the threat of death is overcome. We no longer live under the curse of this judgment or anyone's judgment, even the very right judgment of the law. For we have Christ's victory over sin and death as our own, and we get to claim the new title of our inheritance as the children of God. When we were baptized, we put on Christ and the garments of his righteousness, righteousness that is as far-reaching and as far-promising as all the ends of the earth. The promising newness of God's grace in Christ trumps all that is old in our lives, including the depth of our sins. That new peace we have that reconciles us with God through Christ becomes our new witness. You know, we spend so much of our lives engaging in such foolish acts. We blame people, we dwell on the past, and seek to find ways to excuse ourselves. All we are doing is ruminating and stewing in a false sense of righteousness. We're not escaping the deep scandal of our sin, nor are we finding any peace for our lives. We are only bearing witness to how we, like Paul, are among the wretched. But God in Christ has set us free from all of this. Christ has blessed us with his peace, his peace that reconciles us to God and to one another. Dietrich Bonhoeffer was a German theologian who suffered in a prison camp in Nazi Germany. He once wallowed in his cell, wondering what his life's meaning was all about. But he found the peace of Christ beyond any and all of his self-absorbing wretchedness and weakness. He realized that he was only running from victory already achieved, a victory which is ours already now through faith. We get to be bold to confess the truth that we are indeed sinners, but also get to be bold to embrace even more the promise that Jesus the Christ came to save us from the depth of our sin and to grace us with his peace. So it was later in his life that Paul had no fear of admitting the truth of his status as the chief of sinners from all that he did to persecute the faith. There was no reason to try to cover it up or conceal it. He could be free to say what was in fact true of his life because of the surpassing grace and peace that he and all have received in Christ. Paul says the saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners 
of whom I am the foremost. Our sin is conquered, not by any of our own vain efforts, but through the amazing grace that we have in Christ Jesus, who took the path to the cross for our sake. Through Christ, we have peace with God, and our wretchedness gives way to the promise of Christ's grace. My friends, let us be bold to witness the amazing grace of Christ crucified for us and for all our lives and indeed for the lives of all. There is no one too wretched for whom Christ's grace does not reach. Are we willing to risk that promise? Through Christ's peace, we become willing participants in sharing in the sufferings of our suffering world in order to love as we have been loved by our Lord. Christ's grace frees us to embrace that peace in our lives and our hearts and to witness to such peace by sharing in the sufferings of others so that for all that is wretched in this world, the last word may be peace. Amen. And may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you all now and forevermore. Amen.